So today, I got another video for y'all. We're going to be checking out Thomas So Well on the current black culture. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Subscribe to the uh, channel if you are new. Without further ado, I'm not going to hold y'all up. And let's go ahead and get straight into this. Let's go, y'all. When I grew up in Harlem in the 40s and 50s, I never heard a gunshot. Well, let me read what you say in your preface. Um, you say, let me state here. And now that these essays do, that these essays do not mean one, all Southern whites were or are rednecks, two, all black Americans today or in the past were or are black rednecks. One cannot predict, you write, much less forestall all the clever misinterpretations that others might put on one's words. The most that can be done is to alert honest people to the problem. Black rednecks, who are they? These would be blacks who came out of the Southern culture and who, who carried that culture with them okay. north into the, into the urban ghettos and into the ghettos of the South for that matter. Uh, and who have not moved out of that culture since. Over the, over the years, both blacks and whites have moved away from that culture. But in the poorest and worst of the ghetto areas, there are lots of people who have not. And these kinds, of, it's, a, it's a culture which, which didn't do whites any good. And it's certainly not doing blacks any good today. And the tragedy is that people regard this culture as somehow the authentic black culture, and therefore you're not to interfere with it. I'm proud to be a bartender. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I don't feel no ways tired. I come too far from where I started from. Black English is considered not quite proper English. On the other hand, if blacks happen to have all the power and uh, own all the corporations and whites were working for them, it would be the other way around. There was a period, I'm wow. trying to remember now, I believe it was in the mid-70s mm. when uh, substandard English began to become a, a, yes. a, 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 a began to become viewed as a discipline of its own within linguistic oh, yes. studies and so forth. And for all I know, it was all perfectly legitimate that certain speech patterns would be traced back to various regions in Africa and so forth. And this is a, this is a language of its own. It has its own validity. But the argument, your argument would be, I don't really care what its validity is. It's holding people back. It's, yes. pre it's preventing them per from participating in the wider society. Is that right? Ab absolutely. And also, none of these things went back to Africa. Oh, is that so? No. You, you can, yes, they did not go back to Africa. Uh, if you look at uh, the peace, for example, using the word acts for ask and stuff like that, uh, all of that goes back to the South, and, the, and, and it goes back to the parts of Britain from which white Southerners came. So if you trace, the call, calling uh, hog entrails chitlins, uh, that was, that, that, that was in a certain section of Britain, wow. a section from which whites moved into the South. And, the, and they were known as uh, rednecks and crackers in Britain in centuries past before they ever set foot in the South. Uh, so it, it, the whole thing is as phony as the $3 bill. In Intellectuals and Race, you cite an observation by the intelligence expert, IQ scientist, James Flynn, that just stopped me cold. Mm. After the Second World War, you've got large numbers of, of American troops remaining in Germany. For that okay. matter, there's still several tens of thousands there today. And both black and white American soldiers had children with German women. Mm. Mm. And Flynn discovered that those children growing up in Germany mm. showed no IQ differences at all. Mm. The, the, the black kids and the white kids, the same. Professor Flynn concluded that the reason was that the offspring of black soldiers in Germany grew up in a nation with no black subculture, yeah. close quote. Which means what? Which means they experienced exactly the same expectations. Is this the... They no, no, no. The expectations are external. The culture in which they grew up was, was, was not the culture in which black kids grew up in America today. Okay. So they had... There's no gangster rap. In Ger uh, uh, that, that, that was pervasively uh, uh, available in Germany. So here's what I'm getting. There is something about black subculture in America today mm. that holds African Americans themselves back? Yes, <laughs> because that very sub same subculture held white whites in the South back as well. 
Wow. That in the time, this, this uh, mental testing in the First World War turned up, among other things, the fact that uh, whites from various oh, four or five southern states scored lower on the mental test than, than blacks from four or five northern states. And so it really was a question of the subculture that was there, which was a handicap to both. Wow. I could go on for days about. Bro, you know what? A lot of times, man, like uh, hearing uh, Thomas Sowell talk, I be getting a lot of times like when I uh, react to him, the first thing I get was so much people love this man. And that's what I get from is like every time I watch him, it's like this man knows what he's talking about. And I get it from the comment section when a lot of you say, yo, this man is brilliant. This man knows what he's talking about. And, of course, you're going to have people that are going to be like, how can you listen to him? But, you know, I get more people saying that they love him and he knows what he's talking about more than I get people saying they don't like him or he don't know what he's talking about. So, like I said, over the course of time with me uh, checking out this man and the way he talks, uh, during certain situations, like this man is very, very educated and he knows what he's talking about. It's what I get from him because I done learned a lot of stuff uh, by listening to him, especially like in these type of videos and some of the other ones as well. But uh, let's keep it going, though, y'all. The social degeneration. But let me give you just one quick example. Okay. When I grew up in Harlem in the 40s and 50s, I never heard a gunshot. Wow. Now, I'm sure someone fired a gun somewhere. Wow. Well, but that's, that's pretty dope, though. So he said in the 40s and 50s in Harlem, he never heard a gunshot at all. Wow. Now, let me know if any of you watching this, and uh, let me know in the 40s or the 50s, did you ever hear, like, gunshots around where you stay? Of course, it's been gunshots, but have you kind of heard them, like, on occasions and stuff, like, where you stayed at, and did you hear them all the time? Somewhere in Harlem. I never heard a gunshot. Now, I'm sure someone fired a gun somewhere in Harlem. Yeah, right. But it was not such a pervasive thing that yeah. you had to hear it. Yeah. You know, uh, I have relatives in Washington. I asked them the same question. People in my generation. Growing up in did, Washington, D.C. Yes, and, and low-income uh, black neighborhoods. Did you ever hear a gunshot when you were growing up? And the answer was no. I have relatives in North Carolina. I asked the same question. No. And now, uh, you know, people in housing projects especially, they put kids, some of them, in, uh, to bed in bathtubs so that they won't be hit by stray bullets in the night. Wow. Uh, now we take it for granted. That they put... I, now, see, I've never heard anybody say that, that they put babies in tubs just to keep from getting hit by stray bullets. That is, man. That's the reason why, like me personally, uh, I be so strict on where I stay at. And I understand that it can still happen. And I know somebody's going to say that. But I feel like sometimes you can prevent that by like moving to a spot where you know you know what I'm saying? It's not like bad people or people walking with guns or people that you know are going to shoot around an area and stuff. And I've always been big on like, you know, trying to stay somewhere for where I know me and my family are safe so we don't have to have to, you know what I'm saying, like worry about, you know, being around something like that every single day or having to worry about uh, do I need to lay down on the ground or do I not need to be here? Do I need to go somewhere else? So, you know, I be very strict on that. But I've never heard them say they put babies in tubs to keep them from getting hit. That there's crimes, tremendous levels of crime and violence uh, in the black community. That was not always the case. In the 20s, it was very common for white celebrities, including George Gershwin and William Faulkner, to go up to Harlem not only for entertainment places, but to go into private homes of kid, people they knew. Uh, and Gershwin played Rhapsody in Blue and, 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 and this, this home where, where Walter White lived. Uh, Milton Friedman, when he was a graduate student at, at Columbia, he and the lady he later married would go dancing at the Savoy Ballroom in Harlem. And he said, we had no fear of being uh, mugged or accosted on the street or anything like that. You've told, I've heard you say, Tom, when you were a boy growing up in Harlem yourself, mm -hmm. th th 
your own neighborhood felt totally safe to you. Not not totally safe to you. I, I wouldn't exaggerate, but it's nothing resembling today. I mean, I did sleep on hot, hot nights. I would sleep out on the fire escape. When I tell people in Harlem that today, they, they think I'm, I'm, I'm from another galaxy, you know, but that people slept in, in, uh, on the fire escapes uh, in New York and in the public parks in the 30s all over the city. Because, because it was not like, it was not a jungle. And you could run through a great number of other things. Uh, children raised without, without two parents present. That was about 22% in 1960. Wow. One generation later, it was 67%. And it's gone up a little since then as well. And, some, and, the, and now the rate among whites is higher than it was among blacks in 1960. Right. right. Why is it hard for blacks to move out of this culture? I take responsibility. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. Black people are being slaughtered in the streets, killed in their own homes. These are our brothers and sisters, our friends, our family. We are done watching them die. How do you define a white liberal? Those kinds of people who have the kinds of attitudes that are called liberal in the United States, although the word is misused, those people have created an atmosphere in which um, these counterproductive cultures are to be celebrated, perpetuated, uh, and the consequences overlooked. It reminds me of a scene in the Blue Max where this general is encouraging this daredevil pilot to do all kinds of wild stunts, you see, knowing that the guy's going to kill himself if he keeps doing this, and therefore the general will be rid of a, uh, of a political problem. Uh, now, I don't think that the, the white liberals are, are doing this deliberately, but I think the net results are the same. They are cheering blacks on and doing things that are absolutely self-destructive. Wow. One of the things I discovered in the research for my, for my book I'm currently working on is that leaders of groups that are lagging in countries around the world uh, almost invariably have counterproductive policies for them. And it makes perfect sense because insofar as members of lagging groups assimilate into the values and uh, achievements of the larger society, uh, they don't need those leaders. I mean, there's no, there's no mystery to me as to why Jesse Jackson says what he does, or Al Sharpton and others, because that benefits them, but it does mm. not benefit the people they lead. And all the incentives are for, are for leaders to lead people uh, in, into things that, that don't help the people, but help the leaders. What, you'd, you'd, you'd create an, there would be an exception for Dr. King, though, wouldn't there? Yes. But he, he, one of the things he was he, different because he, tried, he was earliest, or what, why? What's different about it? Well, it's, it's like insurgent movements in general. Uh, when an insurgency starts off, by definition, it, it, it has an uphill battle. Okay. Now, as the, and you can look at the history of Christianity, for heaven's sake. Uh, if, if you're going to be a Christian in the, in, in the Roman Empire, you know, in, in, uh, before the first, uh, in the first century, you had, you had a lot of grief to go through. Yeah. Now, but after Christianity becomes the official religion of the Roman Empire, this is a bonanza. And there's a lot to be done. And so now you will follow policies that are the opposite of what you advocated. You will see, see that with all kinds of other uh, uh, insurgent movements. Somewhere, watching this interview, there's a young Thomas Sowell. There's an African-American who's smart and wants to do something with his life. What's, it se seems to me I've al we've already got one piece of advice you'd offer to him is stay away from the, from the races industry. Stay away from the what, race what hustlers. Ad what advi at race hustlers. What advice would you give a young Thomas Sowell? How do you make something of yourself as an African-American in America today? the way anybody else would. You equip yourself with skills that people are willing to pay for. Wow, equip yourself with skills that people are willing to pay for. Wow. What another great video, y'all, man. Uh, he said a lot of things in here. Of course, you know, y'all heard my take on it. I will be reading the comment section because I want to get y'all take on it. Uh, to see what y'all think about the situation. Like I said, whether you uh, agree with me or you don't, you know, it's all good. You know, we all have um, our different reasons or our own opinions on things, and that's fine. That's fine with me. You know, but uh, like I said, y'all let me know down below in the comment section what y'all thought about it. 
And uh, like I said, we have made it to the end of the video. I want to thank you all for watching. And I catch y'all in the next one.